You're listening to I'm So Vain with Josh Carmichael, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Hey, this is Josh Carmichael. Welcome to I'm So Vain. It's uh, Tuesday, 11 a.m. Here we are. So uh, for all you guys out there listening or driving or watching us, uh, if you are watching us, please uh, check us out on YouTube as well. Uh, Subscribe. We always need more subscribers. We're trying to build that page as well. So um, here we are live on, on Facebook, LA Talk Radio. Thanks for tuning in. We're excited about today. We got some we got a cool guest today. We uh, had to do a last minute replacement and uh, our other our other guest uh, got more jobs, more work, which is always good as an actor, uh, a comedian. So um, while we wait for them to uh, get get ready here, I'm just going to talk a little bit. Uh, good time, always at the top of the show to thank, thank our guests, thank uh, our sponsors. So um, today, it's maybe a little bit noisy. Um, Trader Joe's, one of my favorite stores, maybe one of yours too. Trader Joe's, uh, you know, kind of sent us with this, sponsored this uh, gift basket for us, and to you know, just just as they they believe in the show and they want to help support it in some way. So, um, thanks to Nancy, our producer, and going to Trader Joe's and talking with them, and and um, as we're reaching out, we're getting more sponsors and more more products and. It's just more support, and you know, listen. This is a new show. We're building it. It's a it's a new platform for us. And so, again, we thank you all for for checking us out, for tuning in. Um, we just we just want to do good content. Maybe get you inspired a little bit. Maybe get you motivated about the business or about um, well about life in general. So, I'm going to do that for a minute right now. Um, thanks again to to Trader Joe's. Um, Boot Hill Distillery, who we mentioned before on the show, um, some great um, uh, products. <laughs> well, I'm so blank. Their distillery. What do they make? They distill spirits. Is the word I was looking for. Thank you. This they have some great spirits, and you know, from uh, whiskeys and 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 vodka and and gin and uh, those things. So Boot Hill Distillery, Trader Joe's, um, you know, kind of internationally known great store love healthy healthy products so thanks again to Trader Joe's um, so I just want to tell you a little bit more uh, about me while I'm while I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about our, our next guest and um, you know I grew up on a farm I grew up in a field you know waking up early in the morning I milked a cow before I went to school my my high school um, <laughs> my high school days were 5:30 in the morning start and you know milking a cow feeding calves we had what they call feeder calves so uh, i was raised on a 10 acre uh, ranch we call a farm and then we still have like a 200 165 acre ranch out there and in kansas still it's been in our family for about 200 years um uh, close to that so i have a, I have a heritage and in, in you know my background or the background of my family is you know, farmers and, and, and workers and machinists and, you know, just a lot of blue collar, uh, look at me, I'm, I'm the epitome of blue collar, but, um, you know, a lot of blue collar workers. So I, I just, I just want to share with you guys and, and everyone who's listening that it, it really is about having a dream. So my dream at the age of 16 was to was to pursue acting and pursue uh, a career in modeling and acting, to be honest. And it, um, it just kind of struck me. And I knew that I was an artist, I was drawing, I knew that uh, I wanted to do something different, I wanted to do something special. And it wasn't until I got into the military at the age of 19, after high school, that um, I was discovered and, and was really able to then begin to pursue my goal because in my hometown, a farm town, you were kind of frowned upon or or there were really no outlets. There was one one theater group that I was not a part of at that time 
and um, they just did performances on the weekend at Boot Hill, famous Boot Hill, Dodge City, Kansas is where I'm from. If you don't know that, it's, you know, it's all over the inter internet as well. But uh, just having that dream kept me, kept me alive and kept me uh, awake and, and aware and moving forward toward a goal or toward, toward the dream. So when I was uh, kind of discovered in the military, uh, it, um, how do I say it? What well, was life changing? It was like the first time being recognized at, you, you know, by doing some or, or have an opportunity, being recognized to have to get the opportunity to do what I always dreamed of doing. And here I was, a small town kid, you know, listening to Rick Springfield on a tractor one day and going, wow, I really want to do this at, you know, 15, 16 years old. And then cut to like four and a half years later, and I'm going to New York City to test with Ford Models and Wilhelmina and these huge modeling companies and going, wow, that was a big, it was a big, it wasn't quite a big shock because I'd already been to New York before, but it was just, you know, this is crazy. So my point is, it doesn't matter where you're from or what you're doing right now, you can, you can reach that goal or achieve that goal, any goal, if you, if you have a vision, have a passion and, and just pursue it and keep, and, and, and just start, just take the risk. Like um, since then, I've you know I've taken so many risks. I've given up family time. I've given up vacation time. I've given up uh, quality time with my friends and and like I said, in my family. Uh, just the sacrifice, the, the sacrifices that you have to make in order to to make it and make a living at it. And I've been fortunate. I've been making a living at it since 1990 um, when I came out to LA. So um, that's the that's the good part. But. It, it doesn't come without hard work still today. So um, I think we're going to uh, start this with, uh, oh no. So I thought, I thought I got the signal that he was ready to go on. Anyway, I'll tell you a little more. So after the, after the military, I went straight to New York. This is gonna become a show about me now, obviously, here we go. Um, this is what we do when, um, when we have a live show, and and we want to want to keep it going and keep the keep you guys in, entertained, um, you know, growing up as a welder and a, and a machinist, I I didn't see a lot of the the future. You know, like I said, there was an, the artist in, input and there was artist interest. I was selling some paintings, I was selling some drawings and stuff like that. So um, cut to when I get to the in New York and get out of the military. And I served my four years and then went straight to New York to be a model. Um, it just felt like, it, it really felt like high school all over again. It felt like I grew up in New York, like I kind of graduated high school in New York because the people there, I mean, I was 23, I, was, I just turned 24, I believe, and I looked like I was 17. So I was fortunate to look younger at, at being, you know, 24. And I met, as a matter of fact, I got carded in like every every club or every bar I went to. They didn't they didn't believe that uh, that was my ID. And I even had a military ID as well as a driver's license. But anyway, they um, the opportunities just kind of started to open up, and made some wonderful wonderful memories for me. You know, it's it's amazing how that was that was like the tougher. The tougher side of New York, or the hard, you know, the um, so it's before obviously this is 1989. This is before 9/11. Way you know, way before that. So it was the it was the it was a, what I called the real New York. It was a tough New York. It was it was dangerous, and it had a it had that um, that energy around it that you know you didn't know which cab to get into or not get into. You didn't want to stay on the street too late. You know, you might be mugged, or you might be you know. Uh, um, interfered with but uh i never had a problem it was it was pretty wonderful i just uh had a great time there and it and there there was that 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 urgency there's more that angst and i met a lot of people mostly models but you know i was i was hanging out in in uh, i worked in a i worked in a bar at a as a as a bartender and a, and a oyster shucker in in manhattan and um it's a famous club back then called live bait for any of you who remember live bait back in the back in New York, I think it just, uh, they just changed names a few years ago. I was just back there in May and uh, I know it's no longer there. 
But, you know, I still have friends today from that and from that club. And um, I guess it was a bar restaurant. It was a trendy bar restaurant owned by two uh, kind of supermodels at the time. So that job alone saved, saved my life. And, um, you know, this is a good time to thank some of those people because I got to be honest, that transformed me into uh, becoming who I am today. So thanks to Live Bait, thanks to Carolyn and everybody at the, uh, at the restaurant and, you know, uh, Tom, I'm still friends with Tom. And, uh, you know, I got to say, uh, Chris Puglio, if you're listening to this, buddy, um, I can't, I don't know if I told you this, but you saved my ass that day. And uh, Chris Puglio, uh, he's a, a really cool guy. Um, you, you'll probably see him on Instagram and, and, and maybe he's uh, watching us on Facebook right now. But this guy, I met him and he took me in, kind of took me under his wing when I needed a job, when I just arrived to New York. And um, my money had been tied up in the military, so I was waiting for my, my funds to be released. So I was really down on my luck, didn't have a lot of money. I had 20 bucks in my pocket, to be honest. And um, Chris took me in to train me how to be an oyster shucker at Live Bait. And one day I got the job and thank goodness that guy gave me a $20 or $40 tip and that bought me groceries for the next few days and then i started working but uh chris thank you i don't know if you rem remember that but i uh, appreciate that and rob Pinnick, my buddy rob we just saw him in new york uh a shout out to him he's a uh, he's a crazy guy i uh, love him man uh, rob you're awesome so uh he posts a lot of funny shit on my pages you'll you'll see that but you know uh new york is a place for me that I, I wouldn't want to live there again, but I, I'd love to go visit. It's, it's a magical city, it really is. So having that start and having that, that uh, you know, I kind of threw myself to the wolves, basically. I, here I am, a small town kid, still small town mentality, even though I'd been around the world in the Navy and the military. And I, and I throw myself into New York City of all places, you know, and, and it was, like I said, it was a high school education. It was a, it was a graduation. Um, another guy, Chris Escudero, helped me out a bit in the beginning as well. Thank you, Chris. He owns a, a couple of coffee shops in uh, Jersey City and Hoboken. So um, I think they're called Legal Grinds or Legal Grounds. You have to check those out. Um, but some really, you know, it's probably the best education I could have asked for right out of the military and. Not only an education, but but a jump start on my career. Because I started studying at Circle in a Square, and I was only there for a few weeks, and I booked a, a film that brought me out to LA. And I'd studied a couple other places there. I was with like three different modeling agencies. You know, you could you could you could uh, just get hip pocketed or freelance with with those as we go. So I was kind of all over the place, and. Again, that's the that's the beauty of it. You know, in New York, it's a little bit different. L.A., uh, you could freelance with some people, but a lot of times those those places might want to charge you or might have a fee. I don't think you should ever ever um, never have to pay for an agency. So uh, st avoid that. Stay away from that. Excuse me. It's a little harder to get an agent in LA. Um, I was lucky it wasn't for me, but it is now. You know, as I see, I've helped a lot of people. Probably about 30, 30 35 people over the years, maybe more than that over the years, uh, get agents in in both New York and LA. But mostly, mostly LA because because I've been here the longest and and I and I live in LA. So even though I was I was uh, it's a little backstory. Um, I've, I've also been an acting coach for. Really, since 2004. Um, so I did it back in the 99, 2000, and then I got pretty serious about it in 2004. So from 2004 to 2014, I was going, um, I was bi coastal. I was going to New York and LA and Texas every once in a while. I went to um, San Francisco a couple of times, and I would hold seminars, coaching seminars, and workshops 
and um, I have a I have a company, uh, you know, another side thing that's called the Carmichael Acting Studio, where I had a studio in, in North Hollywood and in um, Calabasas for a while, and um, that I was going to say that's where that's when I I placed most people or you know got help get helped the talent get agents how should I say actually one of my one of my um, she actually came to my we'll, we'll talk more about that when she comes in but Jilly Real she's uh, in New York right now Jilly if you're checking us out um, thanks for tuning in I know you're out there doing some comedy stuff so, and are very happy and very proud of you so um, excited for you uh, as you can see I'm still sitting alone so um, hopefully our guest is uh, just a little stuck in LA traffic but um, we're, uh, we're, we're ad-libbing, we're improvising, and that's what we do as actors, that's what we do as entertainers. So hopefully you're okay being here with me for the last 15 minutes, and um, that it's not too long before we have a guest. You know, regardless, if, if, if he doesn't make any time, if, you know, and if he, he's, uh, you know, uh, not showing up, you know, because that happens, it happens in LA, people, um, <laughs> people can flake in this town as we know we're not saying that's happening but if, if it does you're in good hands I got you I got you we're, we're good on this so we're just gonna we'll just keep rolling I wish I wish I had a, a live feed here so I could see your questions if you had questions but but uh, having said that are you guys out there listening or watching you know again please subscribe to our our, our YouTube page I'm so vain and our YouTube channel. We're, we're really trying to build a subscription base there. We're trying to get the following there. I'm So Vain Show on, here on Facebook, Facebook Live. It's also listed on LA Talk Radio, which is where we are right now, as you can see. But also, you know, please feel free to interact with us. We love, we love to respond. We love to ask questions or answer questions. Um, we, yeah, we will ask questions. We have a question as well. But um, ask us questions. Ask me questions. I'm, I'm a plethora of information. I love talking about the business, uh, entertainment-based. You know, if you're writing scripts, if you're, if you're, um, you know, you you are working on a scene, or you know, you're doing a comedy show, and you you know, you want to talk about that. If if you want to be a guest, and uh, we're pretty booked right now for the next uh, couple of months, but. We're always looking for you know um, a new guest and exciting guest and and cool people. I mean we have a uh, we have some some really interesting guests coming up. I, I think all of our guests are they've been kind of hand hand selected so far, and most of them I know a little bit or you know somewhat about and or know of them enough to know that not only would they be interesting to talk to, but they they'll be they'll be fun for you guys to get to know a little better as well. And just like just like anyone, we're trying to promote ourselves. We're trying to, you know, always, you know, actors are always trying to get a job. We're always trying to promote ourselves, get out there. Um, that's not why I'm doing this, though. I'm doing this because I I I love doing this. This is this is more who I am than than really anything else because I love I love sharing. I I've, I've worked my tail off. I came from a I came from a very introverted and closed off society. You know, uh, you know I don't like to talk about this all the time, but you know I was I was I was I came from a tough a, a, a tough family, a tough father who um, didn't allow a lot of creative energy in our in our house. So, um, you, you know, building that up and working that out. You know, I just I just wrote a self help book, a, a kind of a, a philosophical self help book a course that um, I'm looking at a couple different um, publishers right now to get that out. So hopefully January of, of, of 2020, that book will be released and we'll be able to go and talk about that and, and seminar that and, and really reach more people to help. So my purpose is and ha always has been to help, to simply give back, share my wealth of knowledge that I've worked so hard to achieve and the, and the understanding of not only the business but human nature. You know, when I talk to people, when I look at people, they tell me their stories, and it doesn't matter what level, what level they're on. You know, um, I, I know, 
I, I can see this. I know uh, Bill Cosby has gotten into a lot of trouble, but I was fortunate to time many years ago, to, uh, 20 years ago, I got to work it with him on Touched by an Angel. Um, and I sat with that man for, you know, five days and had some very cool talks. And uh, anyway, I just saw our, our guest just arrive. So we're going we're gonna to get to him in just a minute. But um, anyway, that guy, uh, here he is, you know, he's iconic at the time. He comes in and he tells me, just opens up to me and shares with me. So um, I, I, it's just, that's, that's who I am. I, I hopefully will make, make you guys comfortable and our guests comfortable enough to where they share some, some cool stuff with you, like, like most people I have in my, in my life. And, and that's to finish up my point. That's why I'm doing this. I want to give back. I want to motivate. I want to inspire you guys. So whoever's watching and listening, this is for you, and this is what we're doing. So our guest is here. Yay. A little traffic, a little, little, uh, little Tuesday traffic in L.A. Um, thank you so much. Uh, our next guest is a, a cool guy. He's, he's got a lot of energy and a lot of fun. He's worked – I was watching some of his stuff on, online. I mean, I think he's been on, like, every – Every CSI, Law and Order, criminal, criminal. What's the other one? Um, all, of, all of the uh, the um, criminal shows, the uh, CSI shows. I'm like everywhere I, I tuned in, and uh, he was also the star, uh, one of the stars alongside the supermodel Tyra Banks in Life Size Two. So, without further ado, Hank Chan, everyone, the Hankster. Hi, how are you? And we're on video, and I'm gramming. Hi. Look at Hi. you. I was supposed to jump right in, and I don't think I did. How are you, John? Good, man. How are good, you? Good, good, to good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, my God. How was your ride over? Uh, it was intense. It yeah. was intense. As uh, you know, I think we just have to be fully transparent and just say that it, I'm having one of those actor days where an appointment oh. comes in. You knew this. I told yeah, you last yeah. night. Yeah, flip that on I am, side. I am most canceled. I was like, I have yeah. an audition that just came in, and it's There's five some water pages. there for you, Thank too. Thank you. Audition, and and, yeah. and, and, uh, and I was like, it's at four in the afternoon. And you know us. Like, when one of these things come in, you kind of Oh, your focus. your focus goes completely to that, well, and it throws you off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, well, you it? can't you cancel everything. I mean, I was. Well, I know it's like you cancel breakfast. I was right? <laughs> like, you cancel. It's like I know. Well, you, when you said that, I'm like, well, I think I think we have time to do the show. And you made and a good point. You made a good point. Other people, there was a lunch I was going to have in Burbank afterwards. Right. Canceled. Right. Uh, I scheduled a meeting with uh, right before I got here. So my apologies. It was with someone just to run my lines. Right. Um, just so I'd had it in my body. But, you know, it's like when they give it to you the day before, you're like, okay, you just have to right, eat, right. live in. So tell, tell, the, tell, the, tell our audience, this is one time you can look into the camera with without uh, have an issue with that. You know, normally, by the way, that's an act. Tagged thing. Instagram. You don't. You the don't Josh Carmichael look, show. There you go. I'm so vain. You, you why, <laughs> why is it called I'm so vain? Because. Are you? Well, no, it's about you guys. Oh, it's about me? Because, oh, it's yeah, about them. Okay. Because you guys, it's about the guests, because we all like to talk about ourselves. Sure. Is that true? Uh, yeah. I mean, the, I mean, give it, not in general, but if, but if you're in a place, and like here we are, we're actors, mm -hmm, and we're, you know, mm -hmm. we're in the entertainment business, but if I'm asking questions about you and your life and your career, and it, it goes, right? Yes, yes. It's, I mean, what other subject is more exciting than yourself? Well, I, I'm i actually really nosy. So I, oh, so you like everybody else's yeah, I'm kind of, I, I sort of like doing what you do on your side, too. Oh, I mean, wow, for okay. a little bit, I did like some red carpet stuff. Right, um, right. And then, I think I saw a little bit of that. Yeah, I did, little, I did a little hosting. I just and you're like, great on camera, man. Thank you. You, 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 you. You do. I well, just I like you. being nosy. I like being nosy. Well, yeah, well, it's yeah. research, right? So yeah. you can't get enough of that. Well, I like that too. It's like a you, you never it never ends, right? It never stops. Well, I like story. I think that's why uh, I f uh, fell into fell in love with television and movies, and so because because it felt like everyone had all of these lives that were way more interesting than mine in the suburbs of Maryland, Washington D.C. Right. And I think that nosiness just sort of carried over into adulthood. And I realize now that I can be a part of the the sausage, right? I can I can be a part of the machine that creates these stories that hopefully yeah. inspire someone else who might be living. So in a boring small town. So what I like to do too is yeah. w going back to your childhood. What what and I was just talking about this before you came, kind of you know where I got my start and how, <laughs> how we started. I was you know I was filling in. Yes, I was uh, I was ad living. But um, 
how did when did it start for you like did you go wow I want to be an entertainer at like six years old or or did it did it come in college because you're you're young and and you know it's interesting what it's a, it's a different world for you coming up in the in the business than it was for me twenty the years guy, ago. So the white yeah. guy in America, yeah. No, not that. <laughs> but, but no, I it just is mean, though, it's no. I don't mean that. I just mean that the business has changed yes. so much. Yes. So it's a it's a different. You have an advantage actually with the, with being probably more te- technical savvy than I am, mm-hmm. and and that's a, obviously you know your 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 Instagram and your YouTube and stuff. You're way more social and and more effective than I am. That and I that's wonderful. I, so I try to be. I mean, I feel like there's teenagers now. There's always some sort of like hologram crap or oh, some, I was like, something. I can't, new all I the can't time. keep up. Yeah. I can't keep up. I can't get. It. I mean, apparently people who use Facebook now are considered old. You know, oh, right? it's, it's, yeah. not, it's not hip anymore. They're all leaving, it, and I don't really. I'm not that active on it either. No, Instagram mostly is that Instagram your thing? mostly. Uh, yeah. I like to get my news from Twitter, but I also recently deleted the Twitter app off my phone because it's. Like always, it becomes too much. Right? Well, it's just yeah. you never know what's what's gonna blindside you, and most of it's not good news. Like unless you follow a, bubby, a, bu- a bunch of puppy mean memes. Yeah, or, yeah. I mean, I want to be yeah. informed with the news, but the news is always horrendous. Well, yeah, yeah. That's why I, I kind of tuned out of Facebook for, mm. for 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 you know certain friends, and I started to, like unfollow them and mm. and whatnot. Just became it became too political and in that. So I I stay I stay away from. It. I th- always think. If there's news out there, you're gonna hear about it. That's right. That's right. You don't have to go searching for it. You don't have to go searching for it. You'll hear about it, and and if it affects, you know, because look, most of it doesn't affect our lives. If you think about it, that's right. It's a bunch of, but I don't. By the way, we don't really get political on here. We try not to. But uh, uh, we're, you know, that's okay. Well, did you hear about the shooting that happened like down the street yesterday? The Topanga one, or is that the one? The one at the mall at Westfield. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Is that Topanga? Briefly. Yeah, but I guess there was no shooting. Though, yeah, it wasn't. Right? It wasn't it was like, like a, a mass murder thing. It was just this, just a gun went off. So I'm just yeah. walking around with the gun. Just they're just like, hey. Oh well, I, <laughs> I, don't, know, I don't know what I, happened. I don't. I don't I just, know. I never. I never follow. I saw someone post about it. and I'm like, oh, uh, okay. Then I read a little blurb on it. It was like, uh, no. So how'd you get started? What's your What's your world? Give us your background. Yeah. So uh, to answer your question, I didn't realize I could make money doing this until maybe in high school when I started uh, going to comedy clubs. I mean, I was underage too, you know, I was like 15, 16, but they just let me in, they thought it was cool. And uh, I was like, wow, they, this is like a career because- Was this out here or was you no, still in No, this is in DC, okay. so th- it was at the DC Improv, which was, uh, yeah, which is, it's a great venue. It's really cool uh, introduction. And then from that point forward, I started like tracking all of the comedians that were coming through the DC area from like Margaret Cho to Jay Moore and right. John Leguizamo and just being like, oh, this is really neat. I still, and it, that still felt more obtainable to me because that's, theater, like physical, in live in person, and everyone has grown up with access and exposure to the school play or like the church theater group, so that is more understandable versus right. like, I don't understand how to get on the screen, I don't understand how to get on this, you know, get, get projected on the side right, of right. this wall. That seemed way more magical, um, but my, uh, my interest, I think, in performing began when I was pretty young and I realized that I had a knack for just cracking people up. Like I was good at impersonating people. I was good at like the smart alecky comment. I would get in trouble a lot. I think I I I was an emotional kid. And then I think being uh, an ethnic minority in America and realizing that you're different and being treated a little differently, but you can't quite put your finger on it because you're in second grade. You don't know why. This was something that felt like I had as uh, in my arsenal, this gift of being able to you know, tell a joke, I think, or just like have fun and not care. So, so I'm, what I'm trying to say is, I was a lonely kid, and <laughs> I've realized I can make money uh, on my survival. What's well, funny is what okay. I realized. By the way, that's that's so common for yeah. almost everyone I've had on the show. Yeah. So that far. and divorce. And well, my parents aren't divorced. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all, all the actors divorced. Yeah, James divorced Lipton. or you know, lo- only yeah. child or lonely kid, mm. whatever. We all we all had. It, there there must have been something about that. Yeah, because. Let me ask you a question. Did did you feel like alienated or like you were different than everyone? Yeah, yeah. There, I and I was raised really religious, also. So mm. I was always in communities where I had to tolerate a lot of discomfort. All right. Like I, I, there was just never a situation where I felt like I was fully accepted. 
uh, and that kind of just became my mo for most of my young to like young adult life. Like just in the last two years, I. Uh, really did a lot of work on myself to be able to function. Just the last as couple a, years? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, last, it's ongoing. Two years, I know. I'm, 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 and I like, I'm done. I like and I'm like done. done. We're good. Two years, yeah. So, no, two you, years you ago, I got out, out of, right? two years ago, yeah. I got out of my, my last abusive relationship. Okay. And I've talked about this before. And wow, it, that's a, that's I, a, that's a good one. That's a deep conversation. It Seriously. Is. Yeah. Well, well, because did you find, I, I want to hear, but I want to add to something. Mm -hmm. Did you find that you were, you, you were attracted to, the drama or attracted to the abuse was yep. that common? Yeah, I I uh, go to twelve step meetings now, and I know I'm a co codependent. My whole thing is, uh, if you are a sexaholic, a workaholic, or an alcoholic, I will heal you with my love. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. <laughs> and I will. I am here to say you Your pure come, love. That's come it. To right. Me. And that's what. And so. Uh, you know, the cliche is that you are the common denominator of all of your relationships, yeah. functional or dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And I had a really hard time taking responsibility for that. I was always like, what is it about me that these guys, when it, well, how come people don't respect me and they don't value me? And I wow. realized that I am choosing these people to, uh, I'm, I'm choosing these people and I'm choosing to stay. And yeah. you know, I'm in a great relationship now and I'm like, wow. I'm like, if I met him. So different. I'm like, if I met him like two years ago, I might've been like, you know what? He's so reliable, I don't know. I don't know, he's so, I'm like, every time he calls me, I call him, he calls me back, that's fair. I don't know if there's any mystery. I feel like there's is not enough, I don't know if we have chemistry. It's so dependable, oh my God, you know? I've, I've said is there that any too. Excitement? Like, is there any excitement in this relationship? You get used to the drama, right? Yes. And you want, you're like, when it, and then when it's good. The push and the pull. And you go, wait a minute. Something's wrong, right? When it you, when it's calm, when it's good. It doesn't because we're, feel. Because we're, we're programmed, programmed yeah. from youth, whatever. Yeah. That that's normal. Well, were you raised as a kid to sort of feel like you had to take care of other people's emotions? I think I was a yeah, yeah. I was a, well. I I had a really abu alcoholic father, so I had there you abusive, go. I had a very abusive father, and I was the caretaker of my whole family. You know, yeah. I was walking on eggshells, right? Same oh yeah, I couldn't. Yeah. I, I was suppressed. I, yeah. I, I I didn't talk. I didn't show an emotion. I just I was I followed the I followed the good road or whatever. Yeah. I was a good kid, suppose you know and. And I, but I knew that I had to, I always took care, like I, I was a mediator between my mom and dad fighting, it was whatever, I was wow. always stepping up and going, hey, and I was the emotional one, I was like the, the sense of a guy, and I'm like, but I didn't have a place, and I didn't have a real place. Isn't that crazy? Because and, I didn't fit. And that's also not your job. You No, you, and you were, think about it, 10 year old kid, like taking, you know, as, as a 10 year old kid, I was working a full time job. How are you moder? you're moderating the conflicts of two adults who should be providing unconditional love for <laughs> yeah. you. It's warped. It's I know, really, it, was, it yeah. was a crazy, it's still, I mean, it's still today. I feel mm. like sometimes I have conversations with my parents that uh, are, you know, I'm the leader. Mm. I'm, I'm the parent, and they're the children in You're a way. The so, yeah. Wow. It's uh, it. Yeah. And so that, that was that you too. Well, or, it felt I wasn't a mediator, but I, there was a lot of pressure to live up to a lot of uh, expectations. But there was it was never a clear delineation. It wasn't. It was not set I mean well maybe the straight A's were I mean that's pretty clear right, <laughs> get straight yeah, A's and, yeah. but if you couldn't get straight oh, A's yeah. it, you were made to feel like you there was something wrong um, and not just that you they guilt you about it or yeah it you were like, they kind of pointed you in the direction of maybe 10 other people 10 other little Asian boys and girls that your your age oh, and you, your grade that, and that you did have excel to be there, yeah yeah or they would always be like oh look so and so is do is swimming faster than you so and so is doing that faster than you right. and that's the kind of crap that I really uh it drove me crazy, but also to function as an adult, as an actor, I really mm -hmm. let that go. Like, like my personal life is my romantic life specifically is probably the last category that I'm really doing work on. But professionally, yeah. like six or seven years ago, I realized, you know what, I am very, very different. Like, you can yeah. bring in ten Asian men for the same role. We're all going to do it the same different way. Yeah. I don't care what. All there you go. Roles, That's you know. the, isn't that isn't yeah. that isn't that great when you yeah. when you get to that level? Yeah. And you you realize that you're actually unique. Yeah. You know, and when you start to realize your beauty or mm -hmm. your your essence, like you know, we both we both we had to find it different different time different lifestyles, mm -hmm. but. When you finally get there and you go, wow, that's you know, I'm I am different. Mm -hmm. I am different. Look, me. You said something earlier about being a white guy. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, look at me. I, I'm the stereotypical, I, you know, white trash, redneck, 
cowboy. You can play that. You can I, play, I, I bet you clean up nicely but, in a suit, though. I, I do clean up. But, but you know, there's. I always go, I, I would always say that. Like, Own it. They look at my face and like, oh, you're this guy. And I'm like, no, 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 there's more. Really, there's more. you got to look inside. Sure. And it's hard It's hard to get people to see that. Sure. And if in, they don't. In the business. And if they don't. There's nothing you can do about it. No, and it's, so you just got to yeah. be yourself. And yeah. so I'm like, okay, I get to, I get to be myself in, mm-hmm. in in life in life life. So let's just do it. But I, and I then you booked. I, you start booking. All the, you start. All, I was going to say, when, you know, there's uh, one of my old acting coaches years 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 ago, Harry Master George. Mm. Um, I, I don't know if he's still coaching, but mm. um, great master coach out here in L.A. He had this he had this say, and I quote it all the time. He's like, "Don't give a shit about what other people think." That's right. And if you can really get to that level and get past that. And I tell this all, I talk about this all the time, you know, and, and just in life, because you see how people, we all feel like we're judged. We always feel like people are, are looking at us a, a different way or, or words hurt or, you know, they do, they do, they do sting you. And especially if you grew up in like verbal abuse or, you sure. know, abusive household, they do affect you. But then I go, you know what? That person is saying that because mm-hmm. they're mess- they're, they need to work on themselves. So if the more and more you think about that, the more you can get to, I don't care what they think of me because mm-hmm. I'm me. Mm-hmm. They're not me. Mm-hmm. I'm me. I get to do what I want. I get to, ex- you know, expand and grow and do whatever I want. So I'm, I'm excited for you to, to, to get there too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, also you're, when you're younger, you're made to feel like you should care. And I also realized, yeah. um, like you've heard the saying, it's like the, I think it was like the skills that helped you survive will not serve you when it's time to thrive. It's very, it's it's a little cheesy, but it's very catchy. That's good, and and yeah. when you dissect it, I realized, wow, like as a child, if you think about it, when you're a child, you almost have no autonomy, right? So you're either in your parents' home or in the car or at school. There's always someone supervising yep. you, and you don't really have the and option. And you need you need them to, you're to survive. On them. Yeah, you're relying absolutely. on them. But then when you become a young adult and you have and you have the option to walk away, mm-hmm. we often don't because that's not how we're conditioned. We're right. conditioned. Oh, okay. So dad is yelling at me. I have to still stay here and be quiet. Now, if someone yells at me, you can go mm, and I'll mm-hmm. l- walk out the room. Yeah, you know what I mean. You have a choice. You absolutely have a choice yeah. now, and so that's what I am. It's a little tougher, I think, when you are younger. Sure. But, but you know, when you like, when you do become an adult. Yeah. But but think about this, and this is I, I wrote a book on this, and I'm I'm getting published now. Oh, nice! That, I'm gonna sign it, copy. I mean, you want, you I want, want to sign copy. Oh, well, you got it. You got yeah, it. Great. It's, uh, it's all about it, abuse. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it, it, but it is. Speaking of, I wrote a book about. Yeah. <laughs> abuse. No, but it, it, I'm not. I'm not. Well, you know, it's. I can't promote it yet. It's not. It's. Uh, oh, it hasn't been published. Sh- nobody, well, no, it's a secret book. Be, yeah, we don't be talk wary, about it. Be wary, wary, quiet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Guys? All right. Yeah. Um, no, but it's. I've done a lot of. Re- I've done so much. Mm-hmm. So much work on myself coming from. Yeah. Non-expressive, non-emotional, you know, and then you get into human nature, and you get into this, mm-hmm. and that's why I love. I love this. This is a great, um, you know, being here, doing this, and getting to talk to you and, and the people I bring in. And I, and I was t- saying something earlier. I've kind of hand selected everyone that comes in because oh. not only not only do I want to know more about you, mm. but I I know that you have something to add and something to give back and something to share with people that people that are listening and watching that will maybe inspire them or make make them excited about a life or give if we can give uh, uh, more tools for the toolbox to allow them to take a risk like you and I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what it's really about. That's incredible, Josh, that, I mean, I'm sure with the variety of guests you've had that you've inspired quite, you know, a decent number of people. I don't know. Have you had feedback? Do do people message you occasionally and tag you and stuff? Yeah, yeah, a little bit, but but, yeah, maybe hopefully more as we get out there. That's always the goal. Yeah, it's like we're trying to. Primetime talk show on NBC. For Josh, there we go, Carmichael. Well, you know, but it's uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you for <laughs> thanks for that. That okay, uh, maybe cable, maybe prime time is a little yeah, too yeah, yeah. Right cable, I, like I think I, cable will be more. I think or, Fallon's you know, hey, gonna be there for a while. Or just a you know YouTube show would be good. You uh, know? YouTube, come on, get on like, to Google. You have enough money. Yeah, just do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just just promote it. There should be there's there's a market out there, especially there's, for radio too. I mean, are, you have a good voice. You have a lot of experience. Well, thank you. Yeah, and. There's, I mean, Sirius X. I mean, these people are on the radio forever and ever. Well, let's do it. Yeah. Let's you're, get, you're telling them right now. I, know, I wish I had the money to fund they're, it. Otherwise, they're listening. There you go. The investor they are. So, they're, what's going on? What's your projects? What are you doing besides the audition today? We can't talk about that yet because no, you haven't, you haven't I mean, it yet. Well, it's a, well, it's about. Um, yeah. it, well, it's just it's a pilot. And so you know, right yeah. now, right, right now, pilot. What's refreshing is that pilot season is not just like January. January, right? Yeah, it's it's you know. a couple times, three yeah, times I a like year it. now, right? I like it. Now you just have a little more. Yeah. 
have Netflix. Now you have you know all yeah. the different networks. Uh, that, well, I don't know if it's considered a network yet, sure. but, but it owns pretty much everything. Well, it's a venue. It's, yeah, yeah, and, and it's not like you know, uh, 10, 15 years ago where there was just a certain number of TV slots. It was just literally yeah, January, February, and yes. March or whatever. You're out. You're right, done. Right. Exactly. Holy cap! Wait a minute. You know what? By the way, so Josh asked me to be up on this, and I was like, you know what? If <laughs> oh, you no. talk about your episode of Touched by an Angel, which mm. cha I realized when I was like, wait a minute, why does this guy look familiar? And I looked up, I was like, oh Seriously? my God. You were really serious about that. I really, no, I know that. <laughs> we watched that live when it aired. Really? Yes, I mean, Bill Cosby, and I mean, yeah. what? Quite, it, was, it was just so moving. I remember watching wow. it, and the, and the fire, and then the yeah, it was, yeah, it was Buddy, a, and I mean, that, and we know, when you you walk down a road. Come on, <laughs> sing a Della wow. Reese. Come on, baby girl. Yeah. And, then, and then Monica, the Irish angel. Yeah, yeah. I am an angel sent from God wow. to tell you that he loves you. He loves you so much. It was just so, we, my, it was appointment viewing every weekend. Really? Was, so see, your was, family loved that? It was yeah. Walker, Texas Ranger at 10 o'clock on Saturdays. Whoa. And then it was Touched by an Angel 8 o'clock wow. on Sundays, maybe 16 minutes beforehand. That's we crazy. Were so you were, it was, when you said that, I'm like, oh, you smash it with me. He's joking. No! But we you were, were like really I was raised religious. So this, wow. is, this was like the show. That was actually one of my favorite jobs I've ever had. Utah, right? Yeah. Yeah, because it it was a um, what was cool about it, it was a direct booking and what from who how from the network I, the director from the ca from casting knew me from some other shows right. and I'd been you know in the mix I'd been up for it probably five times before maybe three mm. three or four times before mm. and it always come down to me and one other guy me and one other guy and then finally they go hey you're going to Utah in like January or whatever because it was it aired in like February for sweeps and and I was like That's okay right. and they're like okay we're sending a limo and a script and all this I'm like. This is how it's supposed to be. This is like I've arrived. I really felt like yeah. wow, because you know I was still working. I was still working awesome. my way up, and I'm like, it was a big deal. And then I was, I actually was just talking about it before you came in, because um, I've had this this ability, and a lot of my friends know this, and I'm I'm grateful. And I don't I don't know what it is. I can't uh, categorize it that well, but I remember sitting with here I am meeting Bill Cosby for the first time, and he was a legend. For me, in my generation, your gener you know, all yeah, of us. Yeah, I liked him too. Too bad he's a rapist. You know what I mean? I know it's too bad. It's we're, too bad. We're, we're, so going back 20 yeah. years, here I am, and I, 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 I go over and introduce myself, and then we're we're waiting for a setup on the, on like the first shot with him, and I'm there with like five, five for like five days with him, and he comes down, and he sits next to me, and we're sitting on the curb for like an hour and a half. He tells me about his entire life. How was he? He was cool. It was really cool. He's cool. But the thing was, I felt like... Did he try to seduce you? Did no. Did you go back? No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> That's how it starts, guys. It wasn't like he that He came and he told me about his life, and then he offered me a cappuccino. I would never... <laughs> I don't I remember anything else. Guessed. I don't remember anything else. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, he showed up by himself. No entourage, no wow. people, nobody. He's by himself. He's wearing his like little sweater that he's going to wear on the show. His Hello Friend sweater. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just his, oh, his Cosby his sweater. His Cosby right, sweater. Right, yeah. I think, yeah. There's it's like iconic but yeah but the but i the thing for me i'm like oh my god this is like bill cosby and he's talking to me telling me i didn't ask him i didn't ask him he just told me about his life and in that that show was kind of based on his i basically was well, he playing lost his a, son. He, he lost a son so his I, son that, was murdered i was a prodigal son based yeah. kind of based on his son yeah. loss of his son i'm like that's kind of cruel you know but they bring him on to talk about that but yeah. but it worked and you know what i Thank you for watching that. It was it was a fun, years really ago. fun. Twenty years ago when I, you were, it's like it, five. it was a kid. But so, I, I still yeah. remember all the flash. Like I remember, like you come back, you show up at your own funeral. They're like, yeah. buddy, and the sister's happy to see you, but then the dad is still mad. And then Cosby has a one on one with him, and he like I'm getting him. Like our whole family yeah. would just cry at every episode. Oh, that's but, great. But he well, you would, know, uh, yeah. Pat, Pat Hingle played my father. He was. He was, you know, Falcon and Snowman. He, he, we, we lost him years ago. I but don't know who he is. Great. <laughs> well, he was in the, he was I'm in sure the old, he was he was in the old awesome. Superman yes. what movies a legend. or what Batman a legend. movies and stuff like that. He was big. And then Michael Raspoli is in it. Yes. You probably know Michael. And uh, a great cast. It was just some really fun people. How were the leads? Roma and Della? It's great. Actually, Roma, I just posted a, like a Throwback Thursday yeah, a few weeks ago, I think. Of I saw a picture that. from that, she and she commented. I'm she, like, yeah. Uh, replied to a tweet of mine. This was a couple of years ago, like, you know, before I was verified or anything. Like, I, mm. I, I could have been anybody, but I think I just tweeted something along the lines of, "There's nothing I miss more on a Sunday night. It's like it's Sunday nights like these when I wish." 
Touch My Ninja was still on the air. And she, and she replied and just said, hi, Hank. And I was like, <gasps> oh, my God, no. I was surprised she replied to me, too. And I'm like, that's 20 years ago. You know, she was so kind. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, I was married at the time, and my wife was mm. pregnant with our, my first child. Mm. And I just found out before I went and did the show. And she's like, what's going on? And I was so excited. You yeah. know, I was going to be a dad. And so we talked about that. And she was really kind, really sweet to yeah. me. So she was another one that Della, I didn't I didn't really have any interaction with her. John Dye, he was uh, he was cool, too. He, he And most of my stuff was with him and Bill Cosby, mostly. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And everybody else was, you know, all the supporting cast was great. That's great to hear. It's good to hear that, like, the set wasn't complete dysfunction. Because I think every set's, like, a little dysfunctional because yeah. there's always a different problem to solve. Was a, that was, by that time, they'd been on the, they'd been on the well. air for many years, yeah. I think, like, five or six years. So it was um, well -oiled machine. It was a well-oiled machine. And yeah. they're, they're the God show. You know, like yeah, they're the God yeah. show, and I, I would, I would. It like seemed to like think they took over, like we took over the town, wherever, wherever it was, yeah. and be like, oh yeah, that's yeah. another Touch by an Angel episode. Uh, they kind of knew everyone was known there. That's kidding. Wait, so what city in Utah? Was we were, it? I think we we're near Salt Lake. That's so incredible. We're, so we're just outside of Salt Lake. And yeah. so, and everyone was put up in just like a night, in like a nice hotel. And yeah. Driven around and driven around, and we had we had like a day and a half off, and got to see the city and. Back to, to around that was back in the back when networks had that, money. That was back when you <laughs> got a trailer and you had a you had a private chauffeur and you know it was nice. Those were the days. I, mean, I miss. I used to get that on commercials when I would come out when I first started in commercials. I was telling the story not too long ago. Yeah. I, I I was doing working for this a uh, couple of directors and every commercial that had my own private trailer. I'd have a masseuse. I would be able what? To, I would be able to order every food that I wanted. It was like it was like what? Who, you, you don't even get a trailer now. You don't even get a they you get squeeze, a like an umbrella. And, they, yeah. and like they squeeze you stand you over in. there. Yeah, you you sit in with the other you four principals. With, or you sit with the, it's almost like you sit with the background and everybody now that it's like it's a totally different thing. Oh yeah. They don't that. And the trailer is like you share it with yeah. you don't have singles or anymore. No, I mean no. I haven't. No. Do you? Should, I mean no. you're more popular than I am. So <laughs> No <laughs> yeah. on commercials they don't care who you are. No, no, that's no. true. I, I I have to fun tell you something. It was interesting. There was like a an appointment that someone someone was was like do you want to go to this it's same day and I looked at this and I was like did you look at this carefully it was the appointment was in Santa Monica mm -hmm. um, I live in Hollywood so you know that's like a three-hour round trip so they get right, Santa right. Monica also in the breakdown they were like the actor will be playing a mascot so their full face will be covered there oh, is a covered. chance uh. that they may be uh, what are they downgraded? Called? Downgraded wow. for the spot. I was like, if they said in the breakdown that there's a chance they might downgrade you, they're going that, to downgrade yeah. you. Like, I'm not doing that. I, I was like, don't disrespect me like this. Okay, I just that's funny you say that. Crazy? I, just, I just went for one last no. week, and it was a it was a buyout thing mm -hmm. and commercial, and it said SAG uh, buyout, the new contract. This was not no. This was a non-union. Uh, ah, okay. So, um, but it. Uh, I'm I'm fight core. Good so for you. I go, I Good go for you. Good for you. And go that side. But, but it said, it, um, you if you don't make the cut, then you don't get the buyout rate. You get like the day rate, and it was really bad. I'm like, I called my agent. I said, I don't think I want to go on this audition if that's is 600 bucks for the, a day rate if you don't make the cut, the final cut. Yeah. And I'm going, what's the odds of me making the final cut? She's like, just go on it. So I went on. I didn't even get a call back. And I'm like, okay, fine. I was happy with it. So I'm like, I don't want to work. I, I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm above it, but we were doing it for the money and the benefits and all that. So, you know, you have to especially know. commercials, it's not going to change your career that much. Right. At all. Go ahead. Unless you're yeah. flow. Yeah, exactly. Or... You, get, you get a spokesperson campaign, then you're... You're good. Yeah, but that takes you out of everything else. It like does. Mr. Yeah. Verizon, uh, where you know, can you hear me now? They bought him out. He's yeah. made millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. He, Flow makes millions of he, dollars. But he couldn't do anything else. They literally yeah. bought out his image because yeah. it's just so jarring to see the Verizon guy on I don't know Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> like yeah, it would be. Oh, yeah. hey, this that guy. Yeah, they buy out unless they spoofed him or them. But yeah, sure. Or unless you're already like an established. Now star, do you go out like, on like, commercials like, a lot or? Um, not as much anymore because I'm picky. Because yeah. I, I mean, I just had to have this conversation where it's like, I don't know about you, but these days I feel like the the clients and the crew, or not the crew, the crew, crew is always cool, yeah. but clients, they're all, they're so stressed. And I don't think it's anybody's yeah. fault, but there's just millions of dollars riding on 30 seconds that they just don't, I don't think they 
are thinking about actors, which is fine. They're thinking about their job. It's a product. But it's a product. Yeah, you're, it's you're a prop, basically. Act, sure, yeah. sure. Is it going to be the red tablecloth or the blue check tablecloth, right? Yeah. So, but I, you know, as someone who's been building a theatrical resume and I know what it feels like to be treated well as you do, to, you know, I, when yeah. I booked Life Size 2, my first night when I landed, first class, driven, first yeah. class dropped off, hotel, beautiful hotel, and I was in the grocery store, I get an unknown number calling me and it was, and she, I was like, hello, because you know, when you when your production, you just want to take every call because yeah, you don't know yeah, who it is. It's know. wardrobe, or, yeah. Um, and the voice goes, "Hi, is this Hank?" I was like, "Yeah, who's this?" Like annoyed. I was like, "It's like 9 p.m." Ty I was like, "I was like, who's this?" She goes, "It's Tyra." I go, <gasps> "Oh my god!" Hi, Tyra. <laughs> like, uh, how are you? Uh, you know, and she just goes Whoa. on to say the nice. You know, Whoa. I'm so happy to welcome to Atlanta. I loved your audition. I can't wait to work with you. Wow, blah, blah, blah 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 blah. You know, and. Uh, and you know, there have been several instances where you get a welcome call from like the lead of a show yeah. or the producer or people congratulating you. And it's not like I need that to feed my ego, but because I know what I, because I've been treated well, just like relationships, yeah. I've been treated yeah. well, I'm less likely to settle for bad behavior or rudeness. Well, and if I'm going to put up with it, you're going to pay me a lot like of money. It's kind of like when you when you realize that's the better road or, yeah. or there it's out there. Yeah, you don't want to go backwards. Well, it's like I will if you I will if you pay me. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, no, you, I do too. You, you treat me like sometimes crap. I did a I did a job. Yeah. I've done a, a few few commercials this mm -hmm. year, thankfully. Mm -hmm. But um, some of them I'm like I, and I've I've I told my girlfriend it's like mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I felt like an extra. I felt like, and not that that's a bad thing, but it is a bad thing when you're like number one on the call sheet and you get pushed aside till the last minute. I went, wow, I just felt like there's no, kind of like what you were saying with commercials, because I do more commercials than anything. It's like been my bread and butter that for is, 30 years, so I, I still do it. Yeah. But um, yeah, there's there's not that, that, that romance with it as much anymore, which was, which was, it's fun. When you get it, it's like, wow. Well, again, it's not because I'm I'm going through all this therapy and all that stuff. I, it's not other people's jobs to really take care of you. You take care of you, and right. you take care of yourself by only saying yes to things that you really want. So to here's do. the other thing: yeah. do you do like a laws of attraction thing? Do you like vision no. boards and stuff? Like <laughs> I, I don't get that. Earth, I'm I, I, I'm uh, I have made vision boards before. But do you, do you believe that you can you can create your own destiny kind of thing? Uh, to a certain degree. All right, I, let's, I'm, build that, let's build that up I'm, a little I'm bit. A, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm probably, I'm not the poster child for all of that stuff. I, my main, my very grounded philosophy is what does Hank need? You know, what does Hank need? Right. How does this serve Hank? How does Hank, you know, and uh, it feels like it's a very selfish angle, you, at least in my mind, but I realized actually it's, you when you take care of yourself, you're taking care of everybody else around you. You know, like yeah. I, like just trust that Josh. Like I would not. First of all, I'm sorry I'm late, but I would not be sitting here if I didn't want to be here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and, yeah. and that's the security that I can now give the people in my life because you would not want me here. Like imagine if I didn't really want to be here. So a my energy level would not be that higher engaged. Yeah, yeah. And then afterwards, I probably trash talk you to everybody. This guy, he didn't respect me. That I had this audition. Well, you could still do that. But, I don't know that yet. But I'm not going to. <laughs> no, you, but, I but the, the, no, I know you're not. Exactly. It's like I get it. Yeah. And, and you know, it's yeah. like, but but, but with, and that's with, the passive aggressiveness and the and the codependency. Yeah. And well, the, I believe I believe people pleasing. I do believe that we can change and create our own destinies. And I do mm. believe what we think about, we bring about. That's a big one for me because I've seen it work. I've seen it work mm. so many times. Mm. So I want to tell you that it does work. And if you focus on that, and it's not a it's not a selfish thing. It's not an ego mm. thing. It's a it's a, a drive. It's a passion thing. So when you see yourself in the in that role or that you know whatever you're going for, even today. Oh, every you know? single time. I, so until if you see that and you don't worry about the competition, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. So in that way, you're creating your own destiny, yeah. and you're you know it's kind of like the, you know seeing yeah. yourself driving the car that you wanted to yeah. drive, doing that kind of thing. It does work, yeah. and it and and that's to me that's that's exciting. That's important because it it helps you evolve as a as a human being, as a as a person, as an actor, entertainer. All of that, and because look, we're all insecure. We all have our mm -hmm. our shit. The reason we're in this business is because we didn't have anywhere else to go, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, yeah. where's where where can I get a million people to like me, right? You know, to appreciate that, me, that appreciate to see me, me. And, and to love me that yeah. I don't even know, and I'll never know, and I'll never meet, you know, most likely. But but it's 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 so funny because we went for that false. It's kind of a false love if you think about it. Security net, emotional safety. But then, safety guess net. where it gets you to though? Yeah. And this is like cool, like talking to you. I'm, I'm very excited. This has been excited. We only have about six minutes Darn. left. Darn. We're going fast. 
Josh but next time I will get here on time. We'll, we'll do okay. we'll do it again. Yeah. We'll definitely do it again. <laughs> but you know, I was gonna say the greatest thing about that discovery or that self discovery, what you're what you're talking about now that you're doing taking into relationships, mm -hmm. which is huge because you can't hit me anymore. I'll call the police now. Your relation, <laughs> yeah, no, and your relationship is your foundation yes. of you, of your career. And if you use that, it, it'll catapult. It's funny. I did the reverse. I stabilized myself professionally, not like coming out, not caring about what right. people thought of me. And, but I cared so much what the people in my life thought because I think I was raised with such a feeling of scarcity. No, oh, yeah. Of when I realized literally I was just in the wrong community. Well, and they put a in, lot of fear into you. They put too. a lot of fear. You were fear -based I mean, I was kid, raised right? religious and I was raised in a very conservative culture. Yeah. Those are not my people. <laughs> no, <laughs> so no, I yeah. and and you can't force someone to change or to like you. Isn't it crazy? It's so wild. I'm guessing I'm guessing probably like at four years old, five years old, yeah. you knew who you were today. I knew then, I was but, different. But there's no way to express it. Yeah, I knew I was different and I started to, and I knew that things that felt natural and organic to me were being uh, snuffed and corrected. Yeah. You know, from wrist movement or the way I walked or whatever. I mean, kind of in the same way that you see this news thing with uh, Larry Spencer apologizing for making fun of Prince George taking ballet I lessons. Saw that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of. Uh, you know, and just getting called gay all the time uh, and and having that be a bad thing. Right. And so fearing who you are, um, if, you know, and, and hopefully I am now, a, you know, I've done a lot of work to move past that. And, uh, you know, it's inspiring to see see you. So, you know, I look at you and I'm like, oh, I will have a career. Oh, there, it does get better. <laughs> it gets better with age, man. I mean, oh, I'm, I can't wait. I'm, I can't I'm wait. I'm feeling it. Like, this is my time, I feel like. Yeah. So it's like. Can I add, do we have time for me to ask you one quick question? I think we have sure. like two minutes. Yeah. I feel like I feel like people are closing in around us, but yeah. what do you know now that you wish you had known when you were, say, in your early 20s? Mm, I wish I would have really listened to my gut more. Mm. I did to a certain extent, but I, I, I didn't know the business because I didn't grow up in the business. Right. And there was no guy, there was no manual, nope. there were no cell phones, there was nope. no computer to search search it i had a big book you know the handmakers whatever filmmakers handbook mm -hmm. or whatever acting yeah. book you had i wish i would have had uh, access to that yeah. first of all or or trusted my gut enough to n not care what my parents thought because i was still in that phase mm -hmm. and not to care what my peers thought mm -hmm. because i was going places that they had never gone before mm. and yet i was afraid of it because i did care what people thought of me back then yeah. And I was afraid to break out. I was afraid to, like you said, you know, you, when you finally came into your own, that's a big jump, man. It's a big jump to like be really be different than everyone else and know that you can't talk to them the same way you did before when right. you cross over. Right. So um, that was big for me. Wow. It's a good question. I like I like that question. That's I a like great question. I like asking everybody that question. Even yeah. people that are like younger than me, I'd be like, what do you know now, teenager, that you wish you had known <laughs> you didn't know. when you were set? Yeah. Because I feel like we could all counsel our younger selves, right? I feel yeah. like I could go back and, and tell 16 well, you could go back Hank a lot. Of, of, you yeah. could go back a hundred times and do it differently. Sure. You know? It's like, but but that, that you know, since we're, we're in the entertainment business, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, so. I, I wonder what forty-year-old Hank would tell the Hank today. Oh, you okay. know, so well, you should record. You will. You have this recording. I know. You can come back and look. Look back on That'd it. That'd be interesting. We got to wrap it up. Yes, but, let's wrap uh, it up. Hank Chan, the Hankster. What is your uh, Josh Carmichael, everybody? So thank you very much. Uh, throw out your, you know, your Instagram, your Twitter, whatever you want. I'm people Hankster to follow Chen you on. everywhere except for Facebook. Some idiot took it. Okay, so it's Hank Chen is here on Facebook. I'm not really on it anyways. I told you, Hankster Chen. And if you go to my story, you'll see Mr. Carmichael in my story on yeah. the gram. So yeah. thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here, man. Oh, I'm so I, glad okay. I made it. You know, I'm I'm so happy you made it. I was doing a lot of like talk without you. <laughs> it's not it's not as exciting by myself, but. But, um, I we, don't we think did you it. had an issue. I appreciate it. We'll have you on again. Thanks Can't again. Wait. Hey, it's Josh Carmichael. I'm so vain. We'll see you next week. You're listening to I'm So Vain with Josh Carmichael only on LA Talk Radio.